Okay, guys, who wants to see a trio of 427 stroker small block forward build up? 500, 600, and over 700 horsepower. That's right. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today, we're talking about stroker small block forwards. In fact, three different combinations, all of them. 427 cubic inches. First one, all aluminum 427, and that's actually the mild version. Then we kind of have a medium version, the combination that I use when we put it together to test all of the really super high flow cylinder heads in my ultimate guide to cylinder heads. That video is up if you want to check it out. And then the final one is a 427 that I put together where we tested a set of TEA ported Victor heads that flow over 400 CFM. How much power did it make? How many problems did I have? Let's check it out. Let's get things started with the first of our three 427 combinations. This one actually was very, very cool. Although, in my opinion, a little disappointing in the power output. I mean, like everybody else, we always want more power, right? But this one actually was a dart block but it was a an aluminum block so this was a lightweight version it was a 4125 bore we combined that with a scat four inch stroke or crank we had forged rods forged flat top pistons with valve reliefs to allow us to run you know some fairly good sized camshafts in this Obviously, with the 427, we needed lots of cylinder head flow, so we thought that we supplied that with a set of trick flow CNC ported 225 heads. So, you know, they have a really good reputation of <laughs> making lots of power, so we ran these trick flow CNC ported 225 heads. I put a pretty good sized camshaft in. In fact, it was one of the cams that I tried uh, of a series of a number of cams I tried with my engine master's deal with my 410 inch motor. It was a TK lobe series, so fairly aggressive lobes. It was a solid roller. It was 688 lift. It was a 249, 253 degree duration and 108 degree lobe separation angle. This thing also had a Mylodon oil pan and a windage tray, although it's not a kick out pan or anything special. Basically, it was a Fox chassis pan. On top of this, feeding the ported heads in this TK series camshaft was a Super Victor from Edelbrock, a single plane intake manifold, single plane high rise, that had been further ported by the guys at Wilson. In fact, this was, again, was one of the test pieces that I used back in the day on my engine master's motor. We fed this with a 1000 CFM 4150 Holly. This thing also had a set of 1.6 uh, comp or crane roller rockers on it. We had a set of, uh, normally I would run a set of inch and three quarter headers on something like this, just because that's what we have. We have hook or fox chassis headers for a lot of the forward stuff, but we had a set of cooks, inch and three quarter to inch and seven eight step headers, and then we had 18 inch collector extensions on top of this. So everything there seems like it should make fairly good power, and it did. It was decent, but not anywhere near what I thought it should make. So let's take a look and see what happens here run in this manner on the engine dyno at West Tech. This thing produced less than 600 horsepower, 594 horsepower. Peak torque was up at 559 foot-pounds of torque. Our uh, trick flow, the CNC port, the high port heads did have fairly big chambers on them. I think they were 71 or 72 cc's um, after the porting that was done to them. Still, this is a big enough motor. We had a really good camshaft in there. I mean, it wasn't a super race cam. It was designed to work in this kind of RPM range, sub 7,000 RPM range on a motor of this displacement. But still, I thought that this thing should have done a lot better. It's pretty easy to make 600 horsepower or more with a 427. <laughs> really, I kind of had high hopes for this all aluminum 427 because, you know, let's face it, it's all aluminum and it has that little bit of awesomeness to it. This thing would eventually go on to make uh, near a 1,000 horsepower with a uh, Paxton Novi 2000 supercharger run on it because we had built this kind of to run the Novi supercharger on it. So obviously adding boost makes everything make lots and lots of power. But this is the first of our 427s, and it is the least powerful of the combination, although it was all aluminum. So now let's take a look at 427 number two. Okay, we've taken a look at our all aluminum 427, our 427 test motor number one. Now we're taking a look at test motor number two. This was an iron block. This one was, uh, uh, like the others, was a dart iron block. It, it was a 4125 inch bore. We combined that with a four inch stroke to get 427 inches. This one was the motor that we used to test a number of cylinder heads way back in the day. You can take a look at that video. It's up. It's 
the fourth version, basically, of the of the ultimate head test that I did for muscle muscles and vast forge. This one was a scat four inch stroker crank. We had forged rods. I think that they were H beams. We had a forged flat top piston with valve reliefs. In fact, this had multiple valve reliefs because we had to run a number of different style heads on there. We had to run this inline head, like these airflow research heads that we ran. We also had um, trick flow twisted wedge R head. So we had other cylinder head configurations that we had to address with these flat top pistons. So they had multiple valve reliefs. This put our compression up over 12 to one on this combination. We had a good sized camshaft in this because we wanted to make decent power. This is a cam that West Tech had laying around. It was 739 lift, so a good sized lift, a 274, 282 at 50, and a 108 degree lobe separation angle. We ran it with a set of comp 1.6 uh, roller rockers for this Ford. We did run this thing with inch and three quarter headers, which in hindsight, we could have probably improve that a bit if we would have had a inch and seven eighths or even two inch set of headers to run all these heads with it probably would have helped feeding this combination we also comp also supplied this was a this was a comp uh camshaft and comp also supplied the solid lifters for this thing and the push rods and stuff the double roller timing chain all of that stuff we had a uh the headers were run with collector extensions but no mufflers just to open exhaust we ran this thing like with the aluminum one. In fact, it was the same intake manifold. We ran an Edelbrock Super Victor that had been ported by the guys at Wilson. We ran, in this case, was a 1050 uh, uh, RS uh, Super Demon, basically, a Demon carburetor. And run in this manner, obviously we tried adjusting jetting and, and uh, timing. We were also, we ran this thing with a set of Airflow Research 225, just out of the box heads that they had supplied for our cylinder head test. So run in this manner, we'll go ahead and move Whoa. this out of the way, we'll close that out. Run in this manner, the combination produced quite a bit more power than the aluminum version is. This one produced 651 horsepower out at 7,100 RPM and 564 foot-pounds of torque at 5,000 RPM. This thing had enough camshaft in it. It had good cylinder heads. It had enough static compression. It had kind of all the things that we needed to make, you know, decent power, at least with our 427. There are obviously combinations making a lot more than that. In fact, we're going to get, take a look at one of those right now in 427 number three. Okay, now let's take a look at our third and final iteration of the 427s. In fact, this combination shared the same basic short block with version number two. So we had a 427 iron block, dart block, scat crank, forge rods, uh, forge flat top pistons with a variety of different valve reliefs cut into them so that we run different heads. In this case, we stepped up quite a bit to an Edelbrock Victor head, and these were a ported version done by the guys way back in the day at Total Engine Airflow. I remember these things, as, I don't remember the exact flow numbers, but I remember them being more than 400 CFM, so we were starting out in a pretty good point. You know, all we needed was enough camshaft and compression and all the other things to take advantage of the head flow, <laughs> but this test was not without its problems. So let's take a look at this thing. Like I said, this thing was a 427, put in our test description here, um, the TEA Victor heads. This had a Wilson, our same Wilson ported Super Victor. We ran a Jones SS1 carburetor on there. This was a Dominator carburetor, but it was a 750 Dominator. Again, this was a carburetor that I would later on employ in a 410 inch motor that I put together for the, for the Engine Masters Challenge. And the carburetor worked very well. Honestly, on this combination, even though it was a Dominator, it was a 750 Dominator, I think it probably was a little bit undersized. And that's <laughs> one of the problems we had with this. We did have Cook's two inch long tube headers with collector extensions. The camshaft was our same 272, 280. It actually wasn't 735 lift. It was a 739 lift and uh, 108 degree lobe separation angle. So we had, you know, a pretty good size solid roller camshaft in here. The Victor heads required shaft rockers. I'm going to show you. And this was another problem that we had. I didn't spend the time to shim these and get the rocker geometry right, get the push rod length exactly right. In fact, we ended up breaking two push rods during the running, and then I just stopped. I just actually stopped the testing on this. Um, let's see. We had a 
uh, a good Mylodon oil pan on this by the time we that had a kick out, a full windage tray, all of those things. So it had a good oiling system on it. And an MSD distributor like we'd normally run. So run in this manner. We can take a look. We're going to close this out. So we can take a look. This thing made good power. It made over 750 horsepower, 755 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 614 foot-pounds of torque. It did very well, but there was there was way more left here. You could see it starts to get a little bit erratic out at 6,500. And I think that this was the this was me not taking care and taking the time that needed to um, dial in the shaft rocker setup that we had to run on this combination. Which is unfortunate because these heads had a lot more power to give, and this thing could have made you know pretty good power. I think it would have made peak power. Uh, beyond 7,000, and I think that this number would have been a lot higher if we would have taken, if I would have, <laughs> and me, if I would have taken the time to put this thing together properly. But for those that are interested, we can take a look and see how much better it was than the previous 427. That was the 650 horse version. You know, we were more than 100 horsepower up, and it was up everywhere, basically. And a lot of that, you know, there's, we had bigger headers, we had the better oiling system, but predominantly, since we had the same short block and camshaft and intake manifold, predominantly this is, these are, you know, much better heads. We're talking about, you know, low 300s uh, CFM on the 225 as the out of the box tri or uh, Airflow Research 225 heads. But you're talking about something that exceeds 400 CFM on the Victor heads, but <laughs> make sure to set them up properly. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.